12, 16, maybe it's 15, 15, 16, so I forget. But it's close to 16 inches. It works really well if you're only dealing with a four and a half inch panel. As soon as you go to a six and a half inch panel, even set at 90 degrees like it is there, misses six and a half inch cut by about a sixteenth of an inch. So it's a real bear, which means the panel will drop or it'll fall off, but it'll have this ragged, rough, nasty OSB edge that isn't working out. <laughs> So only in four and a half inch panels, which of course we're going to be building our mock-up out of for all of the walls out of that panel. So you'll have the opportunity to use this saw, no doubt. Um, if you go to a thicker panel, your next step up is typically going to be the Prozzi. The Prozzi is about $112 attachment, which bolts right onto uh, your standard worm drive saw or seven and a quarter inch saw, not a big deal. Um, the thing about this saw is it's, it's more of a homeowner grade saw. If you were going to be in the business of cutting panels for any period of time, uh, you'll probably find that this doesn't have all that you want um, to have. The bar on this thing is very light duty, and if you're cutting on an angle, it tends to waver on you a little bit, so you don't necessarily have a good straight line, especially on the bottom of your cut. You'll also notice that the um, uh, beam cutter has a, a, a protective guard on the back side of it, which is all fine and well until you remember which direction you're cutting in which direction the saw turns and all the dust and the sawdust is coming up in your face. <clears throat> so that's not such a great thing. However, just like the linear link, which is made by Muskegon Power Tool, it's an upgrade. This is a $225 attachment. Um, only works on the, um, uh, on the worm drive saws. This has an oiler on it so that you can oil the blade and keep it a little bit more lubricated and it lasts a little bit longer. The bar is a little bit stiffer and this tool also came with a guard on the back side. And because of the same reason that this thing turns in the direction that brings all the crap up into your face, we take the bar off and we just pull the saw backwards. You can cut with this thing pulling backwards just as easily if not easier than you can pushing it forward. You gotta get used to it because that's not what we do as carpenters typically is pull our saws, we always push them. Um, but it works really well, we're just pulling it and all the dust and the crap falls on the floor. Uh, but either the uh, Prozzi or the linear link will work all the way up to a 12 and a quarter inch panel, they roll over just fine. Um, the base on them is not real big, so it's again, it's, a, it's an okay saw. Most of the uh, professional installers that you'll see will, will graduate up to something that resembles this. And they're basically using a saw base. And the saw base bolts into an electric or gas. Saw. I don't care if you use a gas saw. West Virginia has a standard trim tool saw, um, but uh, uh, still makes uh, three grades of uh, saws. This is actually their largest one, the 220. Uh, in most cases, we use the 140, which is much smaller, which is just fine. It can still get you all the way through a 12 and a half inch panel. And again, you're not cutting solid oak; you're cutting two sheets of 716 OSB. Uh, these saws work really, really well. Uh, the bases, uh, the SIP school actually, these are a combination of ideas and designs that we've stolen over the years. And so we have these actually made and we sell them to the students. I think that base is $550, if I'm not mistaken. It's a $550 base. It's very nice, rolls over, holds on to anything you want. If you use a gas chainsaw, remember that the dust is abrasive. And when it gets through your air cleaner and gets into the cylinder of your brand new Husqvarna saw, it's shot. It'll tear it up in a heartbeat. Okay. So extra air filters or changing the air filters frequently is a good thing to think about. Uh, the electric chainsaws work just fine. Uh, work really, really well. No problem. So this is the kind of saw that again is going to give you a good a lot of durability, good straight cut, works really, really well. Can you punch cuts and all that stuff with it? Absolutely. Lay that thing down right on your line like that and it rolls right in. It plunges beautifully. And obviously then you get a good square cut both at the top and the bottom, unlike working with a circular saw, where you're going to get that out of a hand saw or a saw saw or something to finish it off. And the manufacturer can tell you absolutely do not overcut the corner, so it's not like you can take your circular saw and cut six inches past your window so that your cut comes together at the bottom of the panel. That's not a good idea. All right? Um, so we're cutting panels. When we're cutting panels, the next tool that I probably use the most often is right here, and that's the power plant. And I do that because it makes panels come together easier. It also works a hell of a lot better when I'm trying to take an eighth of an inch off of a piece of panel better than something big like this. Much better. So don't be afraid to grab that power plane and just shave off an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch at a time if that's what it takes. Um, 
The other thing we'll use this for is to hit the inside corners of the panels. And I do this so that the panels will come together better because when you have um, dimensional lumber that's sitting in the skin of your panel and that dimensional lumber is trying to drop down in here, it's these little corners right here or even the corners of the lumber that will get you. And if you've got bevel lumber like in a valley or a hip beam, then they really want to bind up and get you and not come together. So anytime you spend with that power plane rolling the edges, either the edge inside corner of the panel or the lumber, whatever it might be, means that the panels are going to come together a lot better. It's hard to show how difficult that can be when you're dealing with something that's you know, 12 inches long or 8 inches long, but when you start dealing with something that's 20 feet long and you're up in the air hanging from a crane and gravity's working against you, then you're really cussing up a storm because it won't go together. So you'll be glad you spent a little bit of extra time on the ground with the power plane. Um, Staples, uh, probably the faster that I prefer using the most just because they're fast, they're less expensive, um, they're good guns and they move along very, very quickly. This is a fantastic gun. They don't pay me to say it because I think I've sold enough Hitachis for them. Um, great little tool. Uh, the one place that you will not get away with using a staple is in a seismic zone. The cross section of the leg of the staple is too small and that seismic movement back and forth will tend to weaken the leg of the staple to the point where shear, I mean it's just like taking a piece of metal and bending it back and forth until it finally weakens and breaks. The same thing is applicable for a staple in a seismic uh, situation. So you get a seismic so that those are not going to be allowed. Like, to narrow crown, is that that is? Is that a narrow crown or white crown? Uh, it's a 716, 716s. Narrow crown steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, inch and a half penetration. Um, then we start looking at once we have cut panels, we have to do edge treatment. And the edge treatment is basically recessing the foam or doing something with the foam that allows it to receive either um, splines or dimensional lumber. If the panels are coming to you like you see them behind you, we've already got edge treatment for the surface spline. That's already taken care of, uh, but maybe the top and bottom has to be plated out. You've got a couple of different options. The one that's most often used is one of these burners. The burners often referred to as plate pocket cutters. Some people will call them charcoal starters or um, branding irons. They're actually made by companies. Um, uh, the black one is L and H, or yeah, the black one's L and H out of North Dakota, and they make branding irons. The blue one is Ram Manufacturing. They're out of South Dakota, and they make branding irons, custom-made branding irons. The irons typically come with these aluminum plates, which have a set screw that tightens down to control the depth of your cut, which is all fine and well, but remember they heat up, things expand, they loosen up, and sometimes the depth of your cut might not be exactly what you were planning on it being. So one of the things we have done to counter that is take those aluminum bars and throw them, throw them away and simply use a hose clamp. And that hose clamp doesn't slide, doesn't move, and then the top piece of that hose clamp will run right across the skin of the USB and take your set, you can set your depth that way. Okay, they come in all various thicknesses, three and a half, five and a half, seven quarter, all the way up to nine quarter, eleven quarter. Okay? Trust me, you'll get a chance to use those and enjoy this, the aroma of melting EPS.